I think I'd quite like to meet some proper Aborigines. It amazes me the way that these people still live like cavemen did years ago. They waste nothing. They have a use for everything. I saw some pictures in the paper about some tribe somewhere who chucked their spears at a helicopter that tried to land close to them. If the tribe got annoyed with you, they would let you know that they were annoyed by shaking their knob at you. That's what they do. <laughs> oh, God. oh, God! See, that's, that's like a proper guide thing. Just in case you ever meet one, they start doing that. Carl just ends that chapter by saying, I don't know what the women do if they get annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god within this new car book of course there are extracts from his famous diary uh, this is you've actually been to Madeira have you yeah okay so this is a bit more of a factual factually accurate informative chapter mm. on Madeira September 30th going away with Suzanne's mum and dad we're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester the plane was full and I had a headache there was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> oh God. Oh. <laughs> we had to get two cabs to the villa because they couldn't fit five of us into one. It cost 85 euros each. That's just whinging. That's not anything. It's day though, isn't it? It's a day away. Oh, but it's not done a because they don't know how far that was. Yeah. They don't know whether that's rip off or how, you know. It's just letting you know that. What? You don't know what the distance was. If it was if Tuck it was a mile, a it's a rip off. If it was 25 miles, it's a bargain. And you know you can't get five of you in one cab. It's all little, little things that might help you on a journey. Yeah. Suzanne's dad said he liked the free biscuits that were in the cupboard. We went to try and find. Sorry, this isn't useful as a guidebook at all. That is absolutely in that. I know they go as a guidebook. Let's have a look. Oh, Suzanne's dad like the free biscuits in the cupboard. How much people complain, you know? And they're going to be like, "There's no free biscuits in this cupboard." We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because it because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh yeah. I bought a fan to put in our room to drown out the sound of the mopeds. I've heard Wayne Rooney does the same thing with a vacuum cleaner. What? He, uh, to drown out the sound of vacuum cleaners or he puts a vacuum cleaner in no, his room if, to if drown out the sound of mopeds? No, if you've just got a noise um, that's constant, it makes you nod off and it drowns out every other background noise. So all you've got is like, if it's a vac, it's just and if that's constant for like all night, mm. you just not people next door going, they've got the vacuum cleaner on again. Put on the JCB. <laughs> people next door going, they've got the <laughs> JCB on. Get the but poke poke the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> That's how nuclear war start. <laughs> yeah, it works. Doesn't work. We watch earplugs. Watched... Earplugs drown out everything. I tried them. I didn't like it, did I? Why not? Because I could hear my heartbeat. <laughs> Oh, you're such a strange little creature. Oh. We watched Jerry Maguire in Spanish. Suzanne wanted to go to bed, but I just said I wanted to hear the show me the money line in Spanish to see if it's as catchy. It wasn't. October 3rd. Sorry, sorry, it's Portuguese or Spanish? What I don't know what, where they, what they're speaking in this country. Madeira. So Madeira. it's Spanish and Portuguese, is it? That's Portuguese, isn't it? Uh, I think there's a mix. I think you get people going it's on Portuguese, holiday. I think. Yeah, but you get Spanish people going there. Oh, so. Okay. so they sometimes show television programmes for ho for possible Spanish holiday makers. Is that <laughs> what you're saying? Or have you just got this factually inaccurate because it's a load of old toss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Amazing. Oh. October 3rd. Didn't do much this morning. Just think about this. <laughs> Just think about this. Why would you put it in? As a, as a holiday. <laughs> Just think about this next line. Judith Chalmers. What happened? Not a lot. Mm. Think about this, Rick, as a description of a holiday. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, you, okay. As Carl said, he loves to go travelling. It broadens the mind and yeah. everything. This is what he did. This is He's there with his family. He's in Madeira. <laughs> Didn't do much this morning. Just sat by the pool, saving insects that flew into it. <laughs> I'm gonna die like fucking Noah. That's right. You see nothing. How were you like, saving them? Did you wait for them to hit the water, then fish them out, or you grab oh, them in the air? Did you see the legs going. <laughs> oh god! Stuck my finger on the top. They grabbed on, <laughs> lifted it off. And what? When it like a, some sort of 
insect lifeguard, you'd see some at land and they'd go, right, that's me, da 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 and you'd go in there. But it's hard to turn a sort of a blind eye to stuff like that, because you know that's something, you know, you're witnessing death. And if you can save something, you do, don't you? You do your bit. And at night, I'd sort of think, have they learnt the lesson, or will they be back, and will they be dead in here tomorrow? But if they can get an extra day, I've done my bit. I can't do more than that. I'm on holiday, do your bit. I'm lucky <laughs> enough to see the world, do your bit. I love it. I did my bit. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that he was running around saving flies and things. It's just something, there's something so sort of... Meanwhile, <laughs> an old lady drowned. <laughs> yeah. While he was saving a beetle. <laughs> There's something so kind of, I don't know, desperately existential about your diary. That's what's <laughs> yeah, so extraordinary about yeah. it. As he says, I just sat by the pool saving insects that flew into it. It was full of death. <laughs> it's just so, oh, it's so depressing, isn't oh. it? Right. We walked round the shops. Suzanne's dad bought two packets of the biscuits he'd like to take back home with him. Suzanne's man bought a tin of corned beef. It was a bit of a boring day today. Jesus. There was a dead bird out the back. Oh, oh. no. Where were you, Carl? Suzanne's dad said it looked like it had flown into a wall and killed itself. No, I think it caught a few insects, but they were covered in chlorine, so it poisoned it. Loads of ants were eating it. Oh, God. I dug a hole under a tree and buried it. The ants were still all hanging around the scene of the death, ages after the burial. Suzanne's dad said I should have left the bird for the ants to eat because I was messing up the food chain. I felt bad, so I gave the ants some breadcrumbs. This is weird. <laughs> this is just so this dark. This is really weird. It's good bread out there, though, isn't it? I should have put that. We have to eat all the food we've got because we're going home tomorrow. Suzanne's ma'am cut her finger opening the corned beef tin and fainted. <laughs> Sorry! This is really weird. Why do you have to eat all the food? <laughs> isn't this like... What was it? That, what's that film? The uh, Amateurville Horror, where there's like a haunted house and there's dead insects and ghostly children walking through the corridors. <laughs> old people fainting. Oh, insects. I'm just saving the insects, mother. But you always eat all the food. That's that's in the fridge before you go home, aren't you? It's all there to be eaten. She bought some pikelets, which I've not, never had them. They like squash crumpets. <laughs> right, okay. Start again. Start that whole thing again. She bought some what? Some pikelets. Pikelets? Yeah. yeah. And I didn't like them because they're not as fat as crumpets. <laughs> oh, God! I just like a different didn't language! Eat them, and it was a big upheaval because, like, I was going home and, and her dad kept trying to sneak them into our bags. Because it's like, they were for you, you take Smuggling. them, we don't want your stuff in, in our house. Because he gets a bit funny about stuff being left over. There's bins that you can't put certain stuff in. There's a bin in the lounge and I put a tangerine peel in it. He goes, that, that sort of stuff does not go in that bin. <laughs> so it's rubbish, yeah, but it's not the right sort of rubbish. Oh, what, but, Someone will camp next to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we want to get a, a better class of camper. <laughs> oh, That's the book, uh, it's called... Happy Slap by a Jellyfish. Yeah, that's from one of the chapters, isn't it? By Carl Pilkington. Get that soon. Particularly if you're thinking of visiting uh, Madeira or Australia. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Um, thanks for listening um, to this. If you enjoyed this and you haven't heard the the others, there's a we've got the whole um, all three series on iTunes. You can go and download those. Uh, the Ricky Gervais Show is that what it's called? It's called the Ricky Gervais Show. Yeah. Um, Carl's also made a program for me, Steve. Um, on my um, Fame DVD, out in November, um, it's called Fame, so I thought we looked like, oh, Fame, I'm Gonna Live Forever. Remember that guy we met who's gonna live forever, oh, yeah. called Howard? Yeah. That was a meeting of mine, and it's, um, it, it's Carl meeting Howard, and it's- uh, Got on with him. It's really good, isn't it? It's really good, and um, they do, he, he really gets on with him. And um, we're probably gonna do a new series of the podcast maybe next year, what do you think, Carl? If you're not too busy making this film with Clive Warren? Uh. We'll see how it goes. Don't, Go, don't plan anything. Yeah, just ch check out um, rickygervais.com. I am Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl. All right. Heroes by David Bowie on Radio 2. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. Um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year indeed. And uh, uh, across from us, the little fellow who presses the buttons because, to be honest, we can't be bothered. Yep. Carl. Pilkington. How would you describe Carl Pilkington for people who didn't hear the show last week? Um, for didn't hear the show, Carl is, and he won't want me saying this, um, because he won't fully understand it, one of the most stupid men I've ever met. <laughs> yes. Um, right. he has a perfectly round head. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. You can, you can see pictures of him. Go to rickygervais.com. We've put up some, um, photographs, just snapshots, and honestly, his head looks like an egg. It's not an issue, though, is it? What? We're on the radio. 
doesn't matter. They're just trying to, you know, paint a picture for people though, Carl, it's important. In fact, I have painted a picture, you can go to the BBC website and you can, uh, I think you can win that if someone hasn't already. Also, can you download it as wallpaper for your, uh, for your computer? You can, so if you want to see a, a cartoon representation of Carl, then there it is. It's an Go original to, uh, signed by me. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. Damien Hurst. No, sure. But it, I mean, I think it's pretty accurate, Steve. You, I mean, to people who can't see it, but you, know, you can see a your real photo or the. But that's uh, Carl Pugton, one of the most stupid men alive. You know, some people that's still think that he's an invention. I know. He think that, 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 that we invented him and we give him lines and stuff, as if we could do that. What? And we shaved his head as well and well, made him live in Manchester for 20 years. It's. People who've not experienced Carl before, though, hopefully there'll be plenty of Carl uh, later in the show. Well, actually, um, we've got Carl doing a sermon. Brilliant. For, um, the Church of England has been requested, um, by the, uh, the, the Church of England, which is uh, unbelievable. Yeah. And, um, I actually went and bought him a little Bible, right? He did have a Bible. I, he said, the Bible's too heavy, it's got no pictures. So I bought him a children's Bible, which is embarrassing asking for that in Waterstones. Yeah. For a start. And, um, even that was too much for him. He was going, there's 200 pages. I mean, the writing, the letters, the font was about, I'd say, half a centimetre high. Right? Yes, yes. And, uh, uh, but you've, you've read it, have you? <coughs> <clears throat> I haven't read all of it, I just got some of the highlights. So you only gave it me the other day. So we're doing the history of religion, are we? Um, coming up. What do you mean? Well, uh, what do you mean, what do I mean? No, I'm just doing a little taster. What, the problem was, right, last week- What do you mean, little taster? What, like, what, what, are we trying to sell Bibles? No, it's no. the biggest selling book in the world. They don't need it. I thought you were gonna do a message, a, a New Year's message. No, but it's kind of been forgotten about a little bit, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Because of Harry Potter and <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you say the Bible these days, it goes, what's that? What do you mean the Bible? No, but I'm just saying, there's probably, a, you know, a lot of people out there have sort of gone, oh, you know, it's an old book, and once something's been around for a bit, you, br you don't sort of visit it. It's like, So uh, this isn't Harry Potter we're talking about, this is the Bible. Yeah, I know, but- It's still you, very popular, Carl. But this film's out, do you know what I mean? This films that have been and gone and it's like, oh, no one's talking about it anymore, I won't bother. So Where's you're- you're giving the- you're giving the Church of England a little bit of boost. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> Excellent. Christmas. Excellent, that coming up. Well, now, last week, like I just asked, last week, um, on the show we were, uh, talking about the gift that you'd arranged to, uh, for your girlfriend. Uh, now, how, how long have you been going out with her again? Um, I think it's about eleven years. Eleven years, uh, your life partner, he got, a uh, um, a gift when he left, um, his old job of a camera. He didn't even unwrap it, he just passed it on straight away, like, passed the parcel to his girlfriend. We were giving him some stick. Um, everyone, about ninety percent of people phoned and saying, you are a skin flint, it's awful. Yeah. How did- how did it go down? She loved it. Did you tell her? Did she- did she love it? Yeah, she, I, I think she liked it, Okay. Yeah. I mean, she- she didn't really have a go on it, I was playing about with it on Christmas Day. Sure. Brilliant. Showing her how to use it and that, and said, yeah. you know, she's- she's paid for a holiday for us to go away, I said, take it on that, you use it. She's loving it. Did you tell her before you gave it to her that you'd got it as a- as a leaving gift for your previous job? Yeah, just before. I mean, I wasn't going to, but because of last Saturday, you sort of put a bit of pressure on and sure. stuff, and I went off and bought her a watch. Nice. Good. I thought a little extra- One of those ones with a little present. calculator on? From a, uh, from a Texaco? No, it's alright, it's like a little square art deco the fella said it was. It is nice, I've seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so did, how did you tell her when you- when you came in with the big news? What, that about it, what, the that camera? you hadn't bought the gift? I just sort of said, oh, you said you wanted a camera, didn't you? And here's one I got from work. <laughs> anyway, here's another one. <laughs> right. So I just sort of told Fudged her, it. but moved on. Quick. Brilliant. Yeah. And also, um, you- Fine. you gave us the, uh, devastating news last week that just before Christmas, your mum's budgie died. How was Christmas in your household, was it? Um, little bit down. A little bit down, you know, with- with any death, it's always sad, isn't it, no matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly um, budgie. Well, I mean, how long she had it? Uh, probably lasted about eight years or something, which is pretty good, isn't it, for a budgie? Right. Yeah, I think so. Um, came unexpected, wasn't ill. Um, <laughs> right. And, uh, what she- what- I spoke to her the other day and I said, you know, how's it going? Cause on Christmas day she was down. Yeah. Been calling her off every day. And I spoke to her the other day and said, you know, how are things? And she said, uh, she said, well, the other bird that's in the cage, she's got a uh, some sort of parrot that's in the same cage as it. Right. It's been a bit down. Sure. It's missing its mate. So what she did, she'd kept a few feathers from the budgie that died, right? right? She got a rock, a couple of, uh, sandwich fasteners, <laughs> stuck the feathers on the rock. The other bird's happy now. Wow. Now I know that your mother explains everything. And if you ever die, we just get a tennis ball, stick it on the end of a broom, she'll be happy. Handbags and glad rags by Rod Stewart. That would make a good theme tune. Brilliant. Wouldn't and it? then it would work really well, perhaps on a DVD. <laughs> presumably, presumably that would still be available in the shops. <laughs> right, for any, um, you know, New Year's vouchers you've got. You're listening to Ricky Gervais on Radio 2 with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. So good Christmases, yeah, all round. Definitely for me. I had a great time, yeah. Carl? Uh, it's alright. <laughs> how does nothing, it, how does it rate with, it. um, uh, what did Suzanne get you? Um, she got me 
uh, you see, you, you were having a go at me about giving her uh, a camera, right? Which you which know, was I given to use. you, which was no, second hand, no, no, essentially matter. second hand. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that bit, but it's a present that both of us could use, right? Mm. And you were making me feel bad about that. And that's why I got her a watch, yeah. right? Which in a way I can use because I can tell you what time is it. Right? Sure, but <laughs> Chico time, isn't it? But the thing is, right? She got well, me yeah. a uh, no. <laughs> she got me a uh, a little printer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Well, what, you mean a little fella who works in a print shop? Just a little printer to go with a computer and that. But for me, again, that's a present that, you know, we can all be using. You are so ungrateful. It's not that, uh, it's just that, you know, when- it's good when you're a kid, isn't it? When you- Christmas is all about, like, your presents. What do you want when you were a kid? What's your best present you ever had? Um, there's a few things. I mean, one that- one that I always remember one Christmas, right? Uh, it was the year when computers first came out. Right. right? And there was one called the Sinclair Spectrum that I wanted, right? What- what year are we talking, eighty- f Must be eighty- eighty- three, eighty four, right, yeah. yeah. And, uh, anyway, I- I think my mum and dad's got me one. It's, you know, it's under the tree in a big box, I'm thinking, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. It's about the size of a computer, brilliant. Anyway, Christmas Day comes, uh, you know, I couldn't sleep and all that, excited like you are as a kid. Yeah. Get up, open it, it's not the one I wanted, right? Really? It's not the Spectrum, it was a ZX-81, Okay. Right? So I thought, well, I've, I best not show that I'm disappointed in that. You know, even even as a kid, you have sort of, you know, that thing of you lost that. Now you say, oh, it's not what I wanted, Suzanne. But go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, so uh, so I sort of you know pretended I liked it and that. I thought, oh, just play some games on it. I'll just get on with it, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I try and load sure. Even as yeah. a kid, he had the it way of the brain. world. I know. His parents have saved up for it. He's, look at his frown lines. Look, he's frowned since he was about four. Yeah. Look right. at those lines. Right. So, yeah, but this is why. You'll understand in a minute when I tell you the end of this story. Go on. So, I load up a computer game which t used to take about ten minutes. Right? Was it on cassette? On cassette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it cassette. sounds like a fax machine, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Right. Anyway, it wouldn't load. I was thinking, what's up with this? Is it broke? Right. And I kept trying it. And my dad sort of- he, he, my mum used to get up early to open the presents with me. My dad got up at about midday, he couldn't be bothered. Right? <laughs> anyway, he comes this down- is I'm so stuffed, like, this is so telling. I know, the picture uh, he paints is I so know, heartbreaking. Is that Alan Bennett or something? Yeah. Uh, uh, Dickens. Yeah, right? or some uh, one of those kind of sixties back like Kathy Come Home, sort of, <laughs> yeah, you know, really insane <laughs> dramas. So, so anyway, so I'm there, right, getting frown growing and that. Yeah. <laughs> Trying try to read this book, thinking, why isn't it working? So my dad has a look, <laughs> and he goes, oh, you're missing a bit. I said, what? He goes, you need a RAM pack, right? right? Which is a bit that you put in the back of it that gives it extra memory. Yeah. So I'm like, what do you what need? You need one of them. <laughs> I'm like, what, what do you mean? It's, it's Christmas Day, right? And and we're talking about the days when like Tandy wasn't open. Sure. It wasn't open for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tandy. Do you know what I mean? It's like now, by lunchtime, Christmas Day, everything's open again. <laughs> yeah, right? sure, yeah. Then you had to wait about two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Everyone like had a big holiday and everything. Yeah. So I'm like, oh god, oh. oh. Actually, started to be sick right, with frustration. <laughs> oh no! What? With How old were you? How old were you? Do you know what? How old were you? Well, like I say, I, I don't know. It must have been about eight or something. Oh! But that thing of like, what? what it's Christmas Day. And I can't play with it. And I had to wait for like two weeks, what have you. Sat over the kitchen sink, sort of going, <laughs> stress, stressing out. <laughs> I hated it. It was a rubbish Christmas. <laughs> wow! I love the idea of you going. <laughs> stress, isn't it? What did your dad say? He just sort of said, look, calm down, we'll get you one when the shop's open. And it's like, yeah, but two weeks and it. <laughs> I have never heard anyone being sick from stress. Oh, poor little kid, just so stressed. Before the trail, we heard Feeder on Radio 2. Uh, Steve Merchant here with Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. We were talking uh, before that about um, rotten gifts and particularly gifts that Carl's received in the past. We're just actually thinking now because we've got to give away this. Uh, we haven't got to give away, but we're generously giving away a Eurythmics platinum disc. So if you're a Eurythmics fan, or indeed if you're not, but perhaps you know someone who is, and maybe you got some some rotten gifts for Christmas, then uh, you can get in touch with us. Let us know what the the worst gift is that either you received this year or maybe even in the past. You know something that really you just just was terrible. Maybe you, like Carl, had the poker face when you received it, you politely opened the box, but inside you were dying. But you can get in touch with us at 88291, we've got the uh, email gervais at bbc.co.uk, or you can uh, phone us 0500 288 291, the worst gift ever will receive the Eurythmics Platinum Disc. Well, uh, talking of gifts, um, I got my, um, girlfriend, uh, a few gifts, a trip to, um, Paris and 
few little bits and pieces, and one of which was a, a trip to the theatre. Nice. Um, a thing we'd walked past before and we'd wanted to look, look really great, the uh, the Woman in Black, which okay. is on the Fortune Theatre in Covent Garden. I bought a four ticket so, you know, we could, um, she could take some people. She chose to take, um, Carl and Suzanne. Well, of course, no, I think it's, it's a scary play, isn't it? It's a spooky play. It's a play. scary thing. So it's you thought ghosts. instantly Carl's the man? Absolutely. Um, and it was, it was, it was, was it great, wasn't it? And the, the, the theatre was so lovely and the, the production is, is so, so lush and it's ge it's genuinely really re it's been for 17 years they really honed it and it's yeah. and it was great watching carl um uh, at one point um uh we were in a box um which i'll tell you about in a minute right, right. and um and uh, i pointed i just pointed to show carl that this face was appearing right but as my um as I was pointing, he didn't see me pointing, my finger came into his peripheral vision and he went, oh! <laughs> and I laughed for about five minutes because he just saw a finger come in. I wasn't even trying to wind him up in that. Sure. That was a, such a bonus for me. Yeah. And I nearly died. But the reason we were in a box, I went there and I said, oh, can I, um, get a box? And they said, oh, the boxes are a little bit small and cramped. I went, okay. So, okay, we'll give you some really good seats. So, we got some nice seats downstairs. And, uh, do people go to the theatre these days to clear their throat. Yeah. And their nose. Yeah. Because I was surrounded by people <laughs> going, <laughs> which I find absolutely disgusting. I even, that even annoyed me doing it and I apologise for people at home listening. And that uh, coughing and eating sweets. Yeah. Chatting about things. Yeah. Right? And I was, I, I was getting a bad neck. You know what I'm like? Yeah. Anything. I just wanted it to be silent, right? So, uh, in the interval I said, uh, I went up to the manager and I said, oh, can we wear the box? And they went, oh yeah, fine, yeah. It was free, they, they didn't sell it. So we went up there and they let us go in one. The first one, we had to go past some people in the interval, treading past people, sorry, sorry, sorry. All, uh, I'm went, a celebrity, I get a box. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they probably think, oh, they've given it to him for a special treatment. I was gonna yeah. buy it, it's no extra money, yeah, yeah, but they just yeah. didn't sell it because it was, a, uh, you know. Another reason to hate you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, but we went in there, there's only three chairs. So I went, oh. Oh, this is we're, was the other box has got four chairs. Carl went. I'm not going out there again. <laughs> right, I said we got. We said I'll sit on the floor. <laughs> Imagine him sitting on the. Were floor. you sat on the floor with your little head peeking over the oh, edge no, of the box? No, no. Well, this, this is it. So right. I went. Oh, let's go. We went out. He was so embarrassed. Of course, everyone's going. Oh no! <laughs> Walking past people again. Went in the box. Everyone's looking at the box now. Yeah. Right? Um, and Carl was horrified. Uh, Carl was trying to hide, but it was. To be honest, I mean, the idea of a box is you get a better view, but I didn't because I was like, oh, I have to sit right at the back. Yeah. I might as well have been like near the fire exit. I just was like, I don't, I don't want to be. No, that's not anything. the idea of boxes to get a better view. I think it's from uh, days where it was you were, uh, how you were meant to be seen. The boxes face each other, right? And you're meant to see who's in the other box. It was very a, a socialite type thing. The boxes are probably the worst view in the theatre. That's why some theatres don't actually sell them. But I tell you what, I'd rather have to lean forward and see someone than be surrounded by people chewing. But and it sniffing. was, it wasn't that bad though, Steve. That's the thing. You know what he's like. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. anything that's meant to be like a nice, relaxing night out, whether it's going for a nice quiet meal suddenly turns into this like nightmare well i won't go to public evening. places with ricky because there's always something that'll annoy him and then he won't take it out on them he'll take it out on you yeah. we gotta leave we gotta leave it's too smoky it's too noisy it's not noisy enough there's music there's not music it's an absolute nightmare well people annoy me that's Stress awesome. stressful so so i mean just the other day right i went out for for something to eat nice quiet you know italian place i walk in there's about six people in there having a nice quiet yeah meal, you know, quiet, I thought, oh, that's good, he's, he's not gonna complain about the noise and that. Sit down, I have, uh, some arrabbiata, which is just nice and that. All right. Anyway, he starts, uh, sort of normal chat, um, saying how he'd like to put my head in a vice. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, he'd like to put your head in a vice? In a vice, yeah. Not really. Sort of normal, yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, I was just thinking that it would be lovely to put him in, you know those vice that are sort of attached to work benches? Yeah. Just so, not to, uh, just put it in there so he's caught, so he's caught there and then I can sort of do what, paint his head or something, sure. or feel it squeezing. And I imagined, I just imagined sort of squeezing it too tight, didn't so, I? So, so, so he's, he's saying all this, right, which I'm getting the sort of picture enough without yeah. sounds. Right. <laughs> but then he thinks, well, why not add sounds? It's quiet in here, right? <laughs> Start sort of going so your head's in the vice, tighten it, and you're sort of going, <laughs> right? So he's sat in a chair, quiet restaurant, doing that. It's like the scene out of When Harry Met Sally, yeah. right? <laughs> All these like tourists and that sat there, sort of going, oh, Ricky Jay's over there. And suddenly, like, from a look of like, oh, that's good, it's Ricky Jay, to what the hell is going on? <laughs> but I just imagine his little head, because what he did, I just imagine him in a tight, and I go, <laughs> Is there any other radio show that's ever been on Radio 2 that has had this discussion? Well, no. Does Johnny I... Walker, OBE, <laughs> ever say, I'd love to put Terry Wogan's head in a vice and see what happens? 
Eurythmics, here comes the rain again on Radio 2. We've got a Eurythmics Platinum Disc to give away, and we'll uh, get to that shortly. Uh, keep your uh, worst Christmas gifts ever coming in. Uh, you were talking, about, Rick, about the, um, you know, nightmarish people you find now in any kind of, you know, theatre or, and the cinemas, because I love the cinemas, you know, and I'm a big movie buff. And yeah. to me, I feel that w when I go into the cinema, it should be the red carpet treatment. I go all the time, you know, I'm a big cinema fan, I shouldn't have to sit with, for want of a better word, the scum yeah. of the world. Do you know By what I mean? By scum you mean anyone who isn't you. Anyone who isn't me. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, but sometimes, you know, you end up going to the cinema, you know, on a Friday or Saturday evening because you, you want to be, you know, you don't want to be a sad loner who goes on the Wednesday afternoon. So sometimes you're forced to sort of see these people. And I went to the cinema once to see, remember that film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Yeah. And I sat there, I thought this is great, I was a nice big seat, it was fine, and this woman comes trundling in. She was huge. I mean, properly mammoth, like the, um, the marshmallow monster at the end of Ghostbusters. Do you know what I mean? Kind of waddling in like that, with this tiny little flake of a husband. And she had everything, she had nachos, hot dogs, big soft drink cartons, you know what I mean? It's like, it, you know those people who, they, they, they've gone out to eat, uh, and if and they pop into the cinema, and if a film happens to be showing there, they'll go and watch that. Brilliant. They've, they've, come they've to gone eat. for a picnic. They've come to yeah. They've and there's come a film to raise, on. Yeah. And um, so they've arbitrarily chosen this film. So she's in there. The trailers come on, and it's not only is she greedy, but you can tell she's stupid. This trailer comes on for AI. You remember that film Spielberg film AI? Yeah. And um, and the, the trailer is something like uh, Jimmy is a twelve year old boy. He does it. He feels like a human. He does it. He experiences emotion like a human, but he's not a human. He's a robot, right? And everyone goes quiet, and she went to her husband. How old was he again? Oh. So already I'm- I'm on oh. my backs up, do you know what I mean? Oh. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon comes on, right? It comes up, and you know it's- it's um- it's in Mandarin, I think it's yeah. a, it's an Asian film. And it comes up, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She says, bear in mind she's paid the money to come in, she says, funny name for a film. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty weird. So, it comes up, it says Mandarin subtitles, she goes, not subtitles. It comes on, right, they're all speaking in Mandarin. She, to her husband, turns to him, she starts going, Ching chang chong chong chang chang chong. No. Ching chang chong chong chang chang ching. Right, join the film. I mean, it's the film started and she's doing that. She's going funny language. Wing wing chang 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 chong chong. And they oh. start both doing it, right? Oh, God. So I get up, I'm so angry, I want to make, but again, of course, not too polite to actually say anything. So I think I'll make it clear what my feelings are. So I get up, hoping that the seat will flip back loudly and I can storm Knock off. Knock her popcorn all yeah. over it. <laughs> over yeah. his stupid face. But, um, sadly, the seats didn't flip up. So oh. I just kind of huffily climbed over a few seats, sat down, ha, brilliant, next to a teenage girl on her mobile phone. Oh. And she's on there, she's chatting away, I'll meet you after, da, da, da. and I wanted to grab the phone for her and say, I'll be honest with you, you're 14, and unless this is your broker in Hong Kong saying the big deal's about to go through, which I suspect it's not, I suspect it's Gavin saying, can we meet behind the bike sheds later, <laughs> put the phone down. People who are on the phone in the cinema. I know. It drives, oh. I know, it I, can, me I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. See, you're, you're, you see, you're like but me. But people always say, they always say, why do you get so angry? Your New Year's resolution should be calm down, chill out, you know. But I, how can you chill out when this stuff's going what's on? Your, what's your New Year's oh, resolution, oh, no, just pal? that, though. I mean, surely people are allowed to, like, have a chat if a film's got subtitles. Why? Because you can read it, it doesn't matter about the noise That is the most stupid thing I have ever heard in my life. No, I'm I just saying- I mean, that I'm really not... is the most stupid thing I've ever- so go along with your iPod on. Yeah, take a ghetto blaster. Well, yeah, you could if you- if you can multitask. I mean, that would do my head in, having music and I don't know what to sort of concentrate on. But, if you- it's only like reading a book when you're on a- train, innit? You've but got what, noise around what? you. What? What are you talking about? These films cost millions of dollars. They're- everything's- everything's perfect. The and music, they, the sound effects. Uh, the, the- the- the whole montage, uh, the- this mixed me- and mm. someone comes along and goes, oh, I might as well talk to Gavin on my phone while well, I was reading it anyway. You're an idiot. Mm -hmm. You're an idiot, Carl. I think your New Year's resolution should be less stupid. No, I'm- I'm doing, uh, I'm- I'm gonna try and learn something new every day through 2006. What have you learned today? Uh, well, I did a lot yesterday, so I'm having a day off today. <laughs> but, but, no, you know, just, uh, well I did, didn't I? I did the, the, the Bible stuff and that, so, uh, I'm gonna- Oh yeah, we've got that coming up. What's your new resolution to be less annoyed? I suppose I should be more tolerant of and others. Do you know what Ricky said is he's gonna be? What? It's gonna be more annoying. Yeah, well I just thought, I just thought- I <laughs> But this is a wonderful hypocrisy of it, because we've just, you've just been agreeing with me about how you hate people who are annoying. Yeah, but yeah. only to friends, people like- The thing is, right, I, 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 I've got to say a couple of things, right? The reason I sort of- torture car is because I, 
I don't know. My friend, I, I, I've got friends with defects. I don't <laughs> know why. I, all my friends are slightly weird or stupid or something wrong with them. Carl's little round head, th- uh, j- j- I mean, the brain of a fish. Right? <laughs> yes. I can't keep my hands off his head. Um, Robin Ince, he's got glasses, he waddles funny, he's got little thumbs, th- his thumbs are too short, right? Sure. I can't keep my hands off him, right? My mate, um, Rob, um, who did flannels with me, he's got a perfectly round head, he's, his teeth protrude slightly. He's in America, though, for when you need a round ball there, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sure, when I go right. to New York or, uh, and then um, he looks like Dave Hill from Interesting Slate. Interesting that you're collaborating on a book but he chooses to live in America. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, could I just say also that I do not advocate the use of vices on friends' heads. It's dangerous. Do not, do not, um, squeeze your mate's head in a vice. That's just between me and Carl and, you know, and he's pro- an experienced annoyer. And he probably wouldn't let me do it, to be honest. I have to offer him an awful lot of money. Also, do not smoke. There's no point. And mm. floss. I wish I'd flossed when I was a kid. Also, if you've got a bicycle or anything like that for Christmas, please wear the correct whoa, safety whoa. gear. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Well, I got a bike as a kid, yeah. right? And my dad, uh, you know, it, I think I think the helmets used to come come with them and what have you. I popped it on, went out of my bike, coming back into the garden. Dad sees me. He said, "Come here." I said, "What?" He said, "I never want to see you wearing that helmet again. You look ridiculous." <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Oh, he'd rather take the risk. <laughs> no one looks good in them, though, do they? Yes, they do. Wear the helmet.